Hi Neil again, still in this property which is going to do for a complete refurbishment in the near future. As you can see it, it is ready for it. You know, lovely property, prime location, just been neglected for many many years. But I've been asked to do a, a survey, obviously the, the purchasers want to get a good idea of what they're dealing with before they start the refurb. So came in, I mean, slot the floors, they're exposed, you can see what you want to see. I've managed to pop some boards up, so I get an indication of how the floor's made up. The suspended timber floor, same again. We've got the floorboards up, suspended timber floors, I can have a look at it. I mean, there's woodworm uh, scattered around, scattered infestations of common furniture beetle, which wasn't unexpected. But what was interesting, you get into some rooms, and where they've got this, yeah, they've got floor coverings down. I mean, ancient floor coverings, but at the end of the day, they're still there. Now, I always think it's worth just, you know, uh, getting your hands in and just pulling these up, or getting to see as much as we can. Now, I'm going to turn that over. You can see we've now got a problem with fungal decay. Look around, the, the section of floor which is exposed, no evidence whatsoever, which is typical because obviously it's south facing, so it's going to be pretty dry that timber. But where they've left this, it's a, uh, the old base, what's it, Hessian? You can see what we've got on the back. The floor coverings, and then on the timber, there you are. A beautiful infection or growth of a, of, it's a type of wet rot. Now, this would very easily be mistaken for dry rot. You can pick it up. And it's a type of wet rot called poria, fibroporia valanti. Now, it's, it's actually, it's quite a common wet rot. But the, the big thing about it is it's very, very often mistaken for dry rot. And uh, it is important again that we understand the difference between the types of fungus because we will recommend different treatments. Ultimately, in this location, I will be recommending that the floorboards are taken back uh, to the midpoint of, of the floor. Obviously, remove the floorboards, uh, get rid of them, and then that will allow an inspection of the joist ends along the front main elevation. Because you've obviously had problems with rear motor ingress, this uh, efflorescent salt at the top. You can see the damp stain on the partition wall. So it is fair to assume that there's a high risk that these joists are built into the front main elevation and they've, they've been in contact with moisture for an extended period of time. So there is a real risk that these joist ends may be affected by fungal decay, either wet rot or dry rot, until the floorboards are taken up. You won't really know. But it's just surprising when you see these little bits, you know, little bits of floor coverings, little nooks and crannies. It is always worth the effort because it would have been very easy just to look in the room, think it looks okay, and not pick up on it. That there is actually a bigger problem here. So there you are, just a short video, and it just it's again, you know, is it for the younger surveyors. If it's easy enough, if it's simple, you know, there was the, the property here is pretty much well, it is unoccupied, but it's it's in a state of disrepair. So it's no great hardship just to, to uh, peel that back. But you just flag something up which probably, you know, which could have been missed. And I just think sometimes that little bit of effort just pays the dividends. Okay, take care now. Bye-bye.